Hey guys, how about a little impromptu Friday night unboxing? I say impromptu because some of the stuff I got a while ago and some of it's actually already been unboxed. Uh, but I was just down talking to my neighbor and she uh, had two boxes waiting for me. Now one of them I knew she had because it arrived earlier today when I wasn't around. But I didn't know that there would be a second box. I'm not entirely sure what's in here, but I have a fairly good idea. Might be more than one thing in there. We'll see. We'll see. Also nice to finally be uh, back onto my table, which has been at least partially reclaimed now that my Scott 6T11 is off of it. As soon as I get these boxes cleared out and this stuff, uh, I hope to start fixing this table up soon. Anyways, alright, so where to start, where to start? Well, I'm not going to start with the two sealed boxes. Save those for the last. Alright, so this is something I actually showed you guys a while ago. I got this, I think a year ago, the last Arky Radio Fest in Willowbrook. This is a 3JP12. And I think I have a 3JP1 kicking around here somewhere, but I couldn't find it. I got both around the same time. What these are, these are cousins to the electrostatic CRT used, well, like that one back there, 7... Uh, JP1. Those are used in all the 7 inch TVs, all those motor, little 7 inch Motorola. These guys. Um, the VT71s and uh, the Admiral, that's on 19A15. Uh, You've seen those plenty of times in my videos. Well, these have exactly the same pinout, same basing. With one exception, on these, the highest potential does not come through a base pin comes up here, which is a little odd because on the 7 inch variety they run on 6,000 volts or thereabouts. The 3 inch variety only run on about 3,000 volts, yet they have a high voltage ulnar, I think they call those, cap uh, up near the front. Might have something more to do with the uh, deflection design, so it's just like a ring of conductive material up here. So there's an A1 accelerator down here, then an A2 around here. And this is the A3 accelerator. Alright, so I don't, why do I care about these? Well, these are different color phosphors. That's orange. I uh, had mentioned these in a video a while back, last time I worked on a VT71, that I figured, hey, turn out it's basically the same. What would it take to hook the, one of these up to a VT71 TV and watch a little 3 inch orange TV on it? Well, for starters, I've got to cut the high voltage in half. But the deflection voltage is about the same, and on the VT71s, they're all kind of interrelated. Like the vertical output tube gets its plate supply from the high voltage chain. So if you cut the high voltage in half down the whole chain, it'd screw everything up. So you'd, I thought about, well, yeah, I could tap into it, make another voltage divider, and play around and derive the A1, the A2, the A3 voltages, and so on. And that seemed like kind of a pain, so I never really got around to it. But, uh, well, next, um, about a month ago, I came across these. I do occasionally just search on eBay for CR cathode ray tubes just to see what's floating around out there. And what do you know? I got this guy, and I got this guy. This is... Oh, I think it's over right there. These are other members of the same family. Is a 3JP7. So same same exact envelope, same base, pretty much same voltages and all that, but this is P7 phosphor. This is what they use in radars. It's a combination short persistence bright blue white and long persistence yellow. So uh, that should look kind of funky. And this. I don't think it's marked on the outside anymore. There are three JP11. This is blue. So I'll pop both of these out, take a closer look at them. Okay, here they are. Now this one's cool. This is a blue one because it's uh, made by Dumont. New old stock. Jan, so it's made for the military. Joint Army Navy. Don't know quite how to interpret these codes. Don't know if it's World War II vintage or maybe 50s.
So it should be fun. That, that stuff will clean up, I'm pretty sure. Just some gunk on the end of the glass there. Alright, and then this guy is the P7, which is special. DC4 silicon compound inside tube base for high altitude operation. So these are probably used in aircraft for onboard radar. Just got some dust on here. It's in pretty nice condition. You know, something you can usually do with these guys. The nature of the phosphorus. If you shine a bright light on them, they retain it for a while. I'll turn off the overhead lights so you can see it better. It works even better if I block out some of the light, or you know, put, put my thumb over it while I lit the flashlight up, so you can see clearly that where the phosphor was excited by the flashlight it retains its glow for a while. And somewhere, I think in my storage locker, I believe I have a new old stock 3JP1. So I got a P1, a P7, a P11, and a P12. So that's medium persistence green short slash long persistence blue yellow medium persistence orange I think short persistence blue for this, this guy here so that should be a fun experiment but then I, now I'm back to what I talked about earlier is how do I hook them up well instead of messing around inside of one of my TVs I thought well, well uh, maybe I can get an external high voltage supply and just pick off ground and maybe the deflection plate signals, maybe brightness and contrast from the TV and derive everything else externally. Well, what do you know? It's a guy selling a bunch of pulled solid state high voltage supplies, variable high voltage supplies. These are pulled off of boards, I don't know, from photocopiers maybe, something like that, where they needed a few thousand volts. These were not the defective part, something else was. And yes, indeed, this works fine. You put about 0 to 15 volts DC in, you get 0 to 3,000 volts out. I have tested this, it works fine. So I'm going to grab a little power supply with that. And then I got me thinking, well, it'd be nice to have a meter on it so I can actually see what the output voltage is. So. I checked out one of my favorite YouTube sellers and goes by Tuber. I'll put a link in the description. He sells all, he's always got good stuff for sale. He sells a lot of um, vintage parts, but most of them are new old stock. That's why I like checking out to see what he's got. He's like, got some nice octal tube sockets, the kind with the nice grounding lugs. These are exactly what they used in a lot of the vintage TVs I worked on. And we'll continue to work on. And check this out. You know those little uh, pieces of uh, spring metal that are inside knobs that are always missing? Got a whole box full of them. A hundred of them. So instead of having to uh, cut up pieces of uh, sheet metal, shove uh, slivers into, the, into old knobs or try to salvage them out of uh, other knobs, Got a whole mess of the real deal. So, very nice to have. Well, I checked out what he had for sale, and what do you know? Something really, really sweet. New old stock, high voltage voltmeter. So, it's got everything all the mounting hardware. And a template for how to, what's, how to cut the hole out of uh, a project box. And there it is. 0 to 10,000 volts DC. So I figure I'll get a little enclosure box. Take this. Get myself a little power transformer. And uh, something like an LM317 variable voltage regulator and rig this meter up to the output of this guy make myself a little variable high voltage metered power supply and then of course I can hook it up to this so 
Uh, so I just did a few more bits and pieces, uh, mainly an enclosure, and um, I should probably get some kind of special binding posts, uh, or, or at least one that can handle the high voltage. I can't just use your plain old like banana jack with 3,000 volts to it, uh, unless I use some like a Bakelite enclosure. Well, the other reason I mentioned Tuber is that he sent me this package. Now, we talked a while back about something I needed, but uh, I'm not exactly sure what he put in here because I didn't I didn't win this off at eBay auction. I, I've given him lists of things that I'm that I'm looking for, and uh, he didn't tell me he was sending this, and I just showed up today. All right, let's see what all is in here. Well, I got some newspaper. And looks like we've got a box. We've got a box in a box. Okay. I think I know what this is. Yes, it's another CRT, but this one's a little bit different. Obviously, it's got a smaller neck on it. Same size face, though. It's a 3-inch. It's a 3RP1. I need this for my Filco 7020 little mini oscilloscope. I showed it to her briefly in a, in a video not too long ago. I'll show it to you again in a moment. So, uh, hey, thanks, Tuber. Put this to good use. I'd given him a list, as I said, of uh, a few things I needed. And um, I'd seen that he had some of these for sale, but uh, uh, I, kept get, I kept missing out. I got outbid at the last second. These get gobbled up on eBay pretty, pretty readily and sometimes go for really high prices, especially the, uh, the P1A variety which has a super flat face on it. I believe the reason is not for people restoring vintage oscilloscopes like myself, it's that there are kits to uh, make clocks with uh, little cathode ray tubes like these and I think some of the most popular kits uh, use a 3RP1 or similar. Because um, these I get dirt cheap. I've gotten three BP ones or three JP ones, five bucks. These new old stock three RP one A, you probably go for over a hundred, or uh, even a used one, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty. Who knows? Uh, but I think you could use these just as readily if you just were a little, little bit of tinkering, get the right uh, socket, maybe uh, tweak the wiring a little bit. Now, speaking of sockets. Something else I'm waiting for from Tuber is uh, he just happened to have a couple new old stock 14 pin CRT sockets exactly for these. So it's just crazy everything coming together. Uh, we've got the CRT, so high voltage supply, high voltage meter, CRT sockets. Now, if I just find a nice, cool enclosure to make my high voltage supply, I'll be all set. Oh, and I need a little cap. I think I might have one. I know I've had them in the past and I still want you to scopes, but I'm not 100% sure I still have one. Uh, if not, I'll hunt around and I'll find something. I'll figure something out. Alright, so we got one more box to go, and I'm pretty sure that does not have any CRTs in it. Oh, but before we get to that, here is a little oscilloscope. There's the Philco 7020 that I'm going to be restoring. And there's the original CRT, and look at how sad and sorry that thing is. I don't know what happened to this. Maybe it got dropped a few times, I don't know, but a whole bunch of the phosphor just fell off. I uh, think it still has some life left, but uh, that's not going to be very much fun to use, because the, the trace is going to be all, all broken up and scattered. So, I think this one will work out a whole lot better. So, I started working on that ages ago, and that was around when my, I think my first camera I used to my oldest YouTube videos broke. 
I ended up losing the footage later on, so I just, I just kind of shel literally shelved the project on this shelf when it's been sitting there for a couple of years. Uh, but uh, one of these days when I get tired of working on radios and TVs, I'll pull that down and uh, finish it off. And finally we have this package. This one's a little funny, at least to me, because somebody found some stuff, took a photo, uh, put it up on the Antique Radio Forum, and asked for some help in identifying them and determining the, if there was any interest in them. And I was the only guy that responded to them. I knew exactly what they were. In fact, I even already had one of them. And I, I had no idea that a few weeks later you would put them on eBay and that I would be the only bidder, and here we go. I guess I was the only person who was really interested in this stuff. So, there's actually a few things in here. So right off the bat, we've got these. You may have seen these before if you watched any of my Predictor Restoration videos. These are Philco Service Pocket Guides. Now, I already have the 59 version, although it's getting a little bit beat up. So I might have another one. So what are these? These are miniature service manuals. So 9037, that's your predicted holiday. So you get a schematic, a fold-out schematic, you get a parts locator, a tube chart, briefly some tips. Uh, there's parts locator on a circuit board, some brief tips on how to disassemble the sets. And there's a 9038, that's the tandem. So there's a Mention about a little bit of some tips about how to disassemble parts of the set. So it's not quite their full service info, which I also I have a scanned copy of on disc, PDF format, I think. But uh, it's nice to have the real deal. Maybe small, but they're pretty legible, and they're accurate. Just stick it in your pocket, and there you go. And the reason I was interested is because I only had the 59. I wanted the 60 because this. Well, should have, yeah, this has the uh, debutante uh, princess and siesta, which I will be getting to one of these days. Those are the 17 inch ones that come in the metal cabinets. So, very cool. And then, in case, uh, oh, actually, no, this one should have um, town and country. If not this one, then 62. I don't remember what the chassis number was on it, but it should be in one of these, because it's, it's either a 61 or a 62, so... In other words, uh, I've got, I think, at least one set in, uh, in three out of four of these. So, well, that's nice to have. Now, what's in the rest of the box? Well... Wow, he went to, he went to town on packing these up. Tubes. Oh, oh, and other stuff. Okay, well... Was be more interesting than I realized. Yeah, I guess he must have gotten the uh, inherited, maybe, or something, uh, an old TV serviceman stuff. So we got a bulb and a clip. But that's a neon bulb. They probably used that to detect the presence of high voltage. These other implements? I don't know. <laughs> a bent thing with a pointy end on it. And a tool with a sharp fork on the end. No, this couldn't be. No, that would be inconceivable. This cannot be a tool for adjusting the cones in a cone-centric radio. <laughs> no, it wouldn't. Although the tip, damn, that tip might work. Might work, but this body would have to go because it needs to be three sixteenths inch diameter or less, and this is hexagonal. Let's check it out, though. It's crazy because I just got tips on how to make one, as you'll see in an, an upcoming video on this uh, concentric set. That I went out today and bought a cheap old screwdriver, and I'm gonna uh, file grind whatever that. Uh, the end of this down so I can put it through here and adjust the cones in this. But boy, it sure looks like these at least have a fighting chance of fitting. Oh, so close. They were just a little bit wider apart. 
I bet this could be used. I could probably bend them apart, but <laughs> that is funny. All right, so it's not for that. So if anybody knows what the heck it is for, let me know. Ericsson Pico Cal number two. This sounds like something to do with calibration. I think Ericsson made test equipment, maybe. Now that wouldn't be as insane as it might seem if this was a Philco tool because obviously this guy was working on Philco stuff going by these Philco service guys. Uh, all these other things in here, I don't know. Plastic disc, kind of like a 45 RPM adapter or something. It's, it's not. There's a piece of metal. And it looks like a little switch. Yep. He had a whole mess of new old stock tubes that are mostly, oh no, no, it's not true. I was going to say mostly for predictors, but no, these are just your uh, common tubes and TVs like I work on. 1X2B, that's a high voltage rectifier. 12AU6, 12 volt version of the of the popular 6AU6 or 6BA6 always useful 6AL5 dual diode 6AK5 6BK7 there's a 6AU6 6BA6 well very nice to have I use them all the time I got lots of used poles that I can pass but it's nice for better sets to uh, you know have some nice new old stock brand tubes Same. I know a lot of guys when they come across tube caddies and they're full of TV tubes, they go, oh no, TV tubes, who wants them, who needs them, they're all junk, they're not worth anything. But, uh, obviously it's somebody like me they are, but, but even in the realm of TV tubes, these are the more useful ones because there's some crossover with these into uh, communications equipment, for example, like 6C4, uh, commonly used in an oscillator. 686 is used in IFs and not just TVs but also some radios. Just curious if there's anything else besides tubes left in these. Alright, well, ooh, bigger tubes. Alright, 6BG6. I'll pull all these tubes out and spread them out rather than record me unboxing or uh, unwrapping each one of them. It'll take forever. Okay, here they all are. Including the one GE that got mixed in there somehow. So, I don't know if this guy was a Philco authorized uh, service man or what the deal was, but it's pretty much all Philco. I've only seen a few... Uh, real Philco 2 boxes before. Uh, some of these I've, I've never seen this design before. It's cool to have such a variety all together. I don't know what time frame this represents, but they certainly changed. So a bunch of them have the chevron pattern on them, and then we get into this uh, blue yellow. I'm guessing these are older. Don't know for sure. That matches up with the bigger ones back there. And Parts. Well, this box is kind of green with uh, stars or galaxies or whatever, and this just has stripes on it. Yeah, well, clearly this is a much newer one as Philco Ford. So this would be post-62 or so. So... And I peeked in a couple of them, and uh, they appear to be the real deal. Because sometimes people reuse two boxes, so you can never be quite sure. Well, even within these blue and yellow, there's some variation. Here too. Uh, but no, no real surprises. Not even any 12 AU7s or AX7s. Plus, I got was a 12 AV7. Uh, some of these have a, a silver label on them. 
Oh, it actually looks like it was just printed uh, over another number underneath. I thought maybe these were a special uh, high quality edition or something. But, nope. I think some of these are lock dolls. Let's check out this 7F8. Oh, I do have some Philco uh, TVs to restore coming up. I don't just have old Philco radios, I have some Philco TVs. And uh, they do use some of these Loctal tubes. 7F8. Oh, now this one's clearly marked on the side used. That's probably why the top of the box was torn off. But it is a 7F8 and it is a Philco. Let's see. Two more things I want to check out. I want to check out the 6BG6G. It's a big old horizontal output tube. Let's see what condition it's in. See if it's the old style. Should be. It's a G-Type. Yep. They did later production runs with straight sides. But now this this is the old, original, giant kind. Cool. And 6BY5. I'm not sure what this is. And the other thing I want to look at is these parts. I'm not sure what's in there. Hmm, looks like a dual triode, or maybe it's a rectifier, or like half-wave rectifier, probably a dual triode. Never heard of it though. Alright, easy enough for me to look it up. And notice this uh, 1B3GT is much bigger than these 1B3 GTs. I don't know why that would be. This must be the earlier style, which were tall. Yep. And if I pull out one of these, one of the later ones. Yep, stubby. They're exactly the same thing. But uh, on some vintage sets, it's nice to use the old style. And on something like a VT71 that used these, and there's a feedback coil wrapped around it, it does make a bit of a difference. Or at least it can. I mean, if you get it positioned in the right space, place, either one will work. Anyways, let's see what's in here. Okay, let's go to the universal replacement uh, pot. Universal because they can work, these can work on half moon or knurled. You can cut it down to length. Standard switch and uh, volume control. Five hundred K C taper, whatever C taper might be. We have a use for that someday. Electrolytic capacitor, probably not uh, something I'd use because it's so old. And variable resistor. Well, the control is a little bit disappointing because it is used, and it's not a push, push on, push off like a predictor would use. Rotates. And it's kind of grungy, so. Oh well. And here's the cap finally. 918. Might mean the 18th week of 59 or 69. Maybe even 79, but probably not. Well, and since it just says Philco and not Philco Ford, uh, maybe it's 59. Alright, well, that is going to be it for this unboxing video. I hope you enjoyed it. And be sure to check out Tuber's 
eBay offerings, especially if you like doing homebrew projects, restoring communication receivers, or vintage computers.